Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today, we have the Civivi Shredder. This review is a little bit late. I'm normally kind of the guy who gets Civivis first, but at the time that this came out, I really didn't have the cash to go buy one. It was like close enough to Christmas that I was buying Christmas presents and stuff, but Geared Towards Gear was nice enough to loan me one. I, it did make my top 10 knives of budget knives of 2019. It was number five, I do believe. Uh, I very much appreciate Geared Towards Gear loaning me one. Uh, I did record a full review of that, and then my phone decided to mess it up because well, every time every time I tried to upload it, it just wouldn't go through. So I reacquired another one. And I don't mind that one tiny little bit because I really did want one. It is probably now one of my absolute favorite Civivis, if not my favorite. It's just a, a great knife. So obviously it made my top 10. That's not a surprise. Uh, they do come in multiple colors. The original loaner I had was black. If you go back and look at that video, I'll, I'll link it to the end, my top 10 budget knives of the year. If you guys have not seen that yet, it was full black. But they also come in these layers. This is the blue. It also comes in a red. The blue and the red, and then it's black on top on both of them. Uh, the the layered versions are $61. The plain black is $59. All of them are D2 steel with stainless steel liners. Uh, no more colors. I think those days are gone of the colored liners in the Civivis. Uh, nice deep carry pocket clip. The excellent usual, you know, uh, Civivi screws, which are always superb. Uh, and uh, very minimal markings. You just have the Civivi logo on on, on the uh, pivot and very, very tiny, tiny, tiny D2. I think my, they always have very tiny markings, but this may be the smallest one yet. I don't know if it's even come across on camera. I assure you it does say D2 down there. There it goes. Can you see it? Yeah, it is, does say D2 down there, but this one isn't even like printed on in black. It's just kind of etched in. So it's even harder to see than the others. It took me a minute to find it. Uh, but everybody raves about this knife for a very good reason. I really, really like it, obviously, but let's get into the specs and size comparisons before I get too out of hand here. We have an overall length of 8.5 inches, blade length of three and three quarters inches. So as you can tell, this is a pretty large knife and you have a blade thickness of just uh, 0 0.12 inches, handle thickness of 0 0.52 inches and a weight, according to my scales, of 3.4 ounces. So well under that ounce and inch that we always look for. So that's a very good thing. Let's do some size comparisons. I'll put it up against, uh, if I don't keep dropping it, your Spyderco Paramilitary 2. You can see it's even just a little bit longer than try lamp pivots, a little bit longer than a PM2. Your Spyderco Para 3. And we will do our uh, our Benchmade sandwich that we've been doing lately. You guys seem to like that because a lot of you guys have these particular Benchmade models. We have a full size Griptilium. And a bug out. So there we are. There you can see it's a, even a little bit bigger than a full size grip, which is not really what anyone would call a small knife. Now, more appropriately, let's compare it to some other Civivis. I don't have a ton around right now, I will admit, but we'll compare it against uh, one that I reviewed recently. This is the Chronic. It's a lot larger than a Chronic, but one that is much more appropriate, and we're even just going to move the Chronic out of the way for this because I want to talk about this a bit, and one that I like, I think the design is kind of influenced by this knife. This is the Backlash, one of the original Civivis, and probably my second favorite Civivi now. I uh, always love the Backlash. 9CR18, but you can see it's it's, uh, it's quite a bit bigger than the Backlash, but you can kind of see that, that design influence there. Uh, the Backlash is a little cheaper. This is one of the original ones with the blue liners. I think they still make them this way, but I'm not sure. They've come out with so many versions of it now. I'm not even sure they make the OG with the blue liners and the shiny clip anymore. It's got the old CVV logo and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit bigger than that. Now, let's talk about the best part of this knife, of which there aren't really many bad parts, or any really bad parts. Uh, maybe one little, one little qualm, but that's it. Uh... This blade, wow, uh, 13 thousandths behind the edge, very tall hollow grind, a pretty pretty severe hollow grind, um, very thin blade stock. This thing is the most appropriately named knife I have ever seen, because when it comes to cardboard, paper, anything like that, yeah, it is a shredder. It just glides through stuff. I know I use the term laser beam or lightsaber a lot, but... 
it really applies to this. As far as just pure like slicing goes, uh, top five that I've ever reviewed easily, easily. The D2 steel is going to hold an edge pretty well. I know D all D2 is not created equal. I know that before somebody puts it in the comments, but Civivis is pretty darn good. I've never had any corrosion problems or anything. I do EDCI everything. That's just kind of, you know, when I have a, this is, D2 is technically not a stainless steel. So if you have something like EDCI or there's other things you can use, I recommend this stuff a lot though. You can buy it at your favorite knife retailer almost everywhere. Spray it on, wipe it off. I've never had a problem with anything. Um, this, I have not EDCI'd this one yet because it is, uh, it is pretty brand new. Um, but I definitely will because it's definitely going to be staying around for a while. Uh, but it, it's, I, it is a really good D2. Now, would I have rather had the 9CR? If I'm going to make one qualm about this knife, yeah, that's probably it. I, I like, CBB's D2 is good, but I get, I'm just, I get, there's so many D2 knives in. Maybe I would have rather that it was 9CR, uh, I like the 9CR18. Does it hold an edge as long as Civivi's D2 if you're comparing their 9CR to their D2? Uh, no, it doesn't, but it's not hugely far off, and it's very easy to sharpen, very easy to bring back to just that complete razor. But uh, this thing did come very sharp out of the box. Grab some paper here. I've not done much with this one yet. I did use the other one a whole lot. Uh, the loaner that I had, but this one is, is pretty brand new, quote unquote mine. So um, this one has not gone through a lot. So that's that's pretty much a almost, almost unused factory edge. But very, very slicey blade. Uh, the thing I like about it, the second most, I, I almost even call it 1A, uh, is the ergonomics. It just, it's so comfortable in the hand. It's definitely full four, full, full four finger grip. Obviously, it's a pretty large knife. And I have pretty skinny fingers, large size hands. Fills the hand very well. Zero, zero, zero hot spot from that pocket clip. The, the ramp just happens to land right in a kind of a void in my in my palm. I don't even know it's there. I really don't. I don't feel the back of it or anything. It's really nice. The jimping is in a perfect place and it has a very slight ramp, which is really nice. You can absolutely use that forward finger choil. This G10 is the perfect level of grippy. Uh, it's a it's a little grippier than it was, you know, like on the <clears throat> on the backlash and the praxis and stuff. But it, as you'll see in a moment, it's still not really like pocket destroying or anything. Uh, it's a little grippier going on in the pocket than like a backlash, but you're, it's increments. And in your hand, it is a lot grippier. Um, I, ergos are just fantastic on this knife. They are just really, really great. Now, let's get to the carry. In the debut of a somewhat return... Of ye old Wranglers. Um, you guys know I used to have ye old Wranglers. I did carries all the time. And they got all torn up. I had to ditch them. I went to a pair of Dickies work jeans. The denim was just too thick on those. It wasn't fair. A lot of a lot of knives that I know slid out of my pocket very, very easily in daily use on camera. Looked like they didn't. So I was complaining about that to my wife. I was going to go buy a pair of cheap jeans to cut up and she said you know I keep all your old jeans like for craft stuff and I was like I didn't know that so I got the box out found these and these are very old Wranglers these are probably 20 years old but anyway these are a much more normal kind of jean that normal people would carry so this is what you're gonna be seeing until I wear these out but slides in and out like I said pretty good like I said you can feel a little bit more in the backlash but it's it's not anything at all offensive and as far as the room it takes up in the pocket it's a pretty slender knife actually for how big it is it's not very tall so you've plenty of room in your pocket putting your hand in and out also very nice if there's there is a flipper tab sticking out you are going to notice that a little bit but the edges are really well rounded it's not going to scratch your pinky or anything like that which is great yeah excellent now especially for a knife this size it carries really well now the action i know i say this all the time uh but it's a sabibi it's great you know, they're always good. I haven't had one yet that had a bad action on it. They've always been really fun and enjoyable. And this one has multiple deployment methods, which is really nice. So you can spidey flick it. You know, you can use the flipper. Even I can thumb flick it, which I really suck at that. Um, it's just awesome. And the detent, no matter which way you're opening it, is excellent. And I've handled four or five hundred dollar knives they had multiple deployment methods and one works great and one works okay but 
these are all equally great. Just the deployment is so much fun. I have not taken this one apart yet, but it's still fairly drop shutty. I'm sure it will be completely drop shutty in very short order. It's kind of one little wiggle there and it closes down. It does make a very unique noise. I'm sure you guys have heard it, that little ting, um, but that doesn't bother me. I like, I think it's just a product of these heavily skeletonized liners to make the knife as light as it is. So what is my overall conclusion? Obviously I like it, it made my top 10, but uh, I like it, I like it even more this one, maybe just because it has the blue in it that I think it looks cool. I don't always like a, a little pop of color, as they say, but it looks great on this. The red one looks cool, too. Um, I just, yeah, I like the finish on the blade. It's just, uh, it's just a great freaking knife. And it's one that I'm going to be happy to keep around to use, you know, for comparisons and battles to the death and whatnot. I will not mind at all having this thing around the house. Great, great, great knife. Highly, highly recommend this BB Shredder. Like I said... Probably my favorite CVV now of, of all time, which has not been that much time. It's only been like, what well, they've only been out like, what, two years. But a great, great knife. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.